everyone. Welcome to lesson three. I'm so glad that you guys are still on this journey with me. We've just traveled from understanding God's creation of fear and now we're heading into a brand new landmark and we're going to begin to tackle five lies that are fueling your anxiety. In the future of this course, we're going to begin to sort of dissect roots of fear and deeper spiritual issues of fear and foundational thoughts and lies that we have in relation to, to God and who we are. And so that's going to help kind of deal with the deeper issues. But we cannot even get to that place until we can actually function in a day and think straight because we're not dealing with all consuming symptoms and thoughts and feelings of anxiety. So that's why I've been really focusing on this in the beginning of this course is so we can kind of begin to regain some control over anxiety instead of it controlling us. And even though it may still be there, it won't be as intense and you'll begin to have a say as to um, whether or not you listen to it. And then we can begin to sort of dig deeper and begin to kind of look at the root root causes. But for now, we're going to sort of deal with the symptoms that you're dealing with right now with anxiety. And so today's lesson is really important in regaining some confidence in what you are going through right now. So the first lie that we're going to sort of take head on is that anxiety is bad and we should avoid it at all costs. We've already learned in understanding God's creation of fear that anxiety is natural. It's a natural physical, mental, and spiritual response. And we're also beginning to learn that avoiding anxiety leads to avoiding life. It is so normal and natural to want to run away and escape and cope with something that is really disturbing us, something that's very tormenting, something that is very traumatic in our life. So it's only natural that when you begin to experience the extreme sensations of panic and anxiety that you want to run and hide. I remember just had my safe spot which was in my bed and I would just run in the middle of a panic attack or anxiety attack and I would just run into my bed and throw the covers and I'd be in the fetal position just rocking back and forth praying and asking God to just relieve me and that was my way of trying to run away from the anxiety but unfortunately anxiety has a key to every door we try to run away from and it tends to follow us there and so beginning to sort of avoid life because we're trying to avoid anxiety actually causes the anxiety to get worse and not only that that's what creates true bondage so for example if driving causes huge anxiety for you when you begin to avoid driving because it helps you reduce your anxiety it only begins to entrap you further into isolation same with social anxiety you begin to avoid social situations and friends because you don't want to experience the anxiety that you're having and then that begins to isolate you as well so even though you may have to do those things in the season while you really recover and heal when you get to a place where you begin to do that to avoid anxiety altogether that's not a very safe place and that is not living in freedom and so avoiding anxiety and running away from it actually makes it worse because it makes the it gives the anxiety power that is has control over your life and your actions and what you do so the moment that you can learn not to fear your anxiety the moment it doesn't control you anymore and that's something that I really want you guys to grasp because that's when you're going to begin to taste the most freedom in your life and so when we talk about accepting anxiety accepting these sensations it's not about saying that it's okay that you're being tormented or it's okay that you're thinking that way it's that it's not giving it the power and the intimidation that those thoughts and things are trying to kind of stir up in you and it's actually teaching it that it's not going to get much of a reaction out of you and it eventually begins to subside. So the best way to handle any lie that we're experiencing is with the truth and the greatest truth comes from the word of God. And so the truth for this one is that God sees you as wonderfully made. Song of Solomon 4 7 says you are altogether beautiful my love there is no flaw in you. And Psalm 139 14 says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And then Genesis 1 31, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And so these are just amazing scriptures to really meditate, to remember that there is nothing wrong with you, that God has created you wonderfully. He looks upon you 
even with your anxiety and even with your weaknesses, he sees you as beautiful and completely flawless. So our lie number two is that I have to analyze every reason behind every fear, thought, and sensation. There's two reasons why this is something that really begins to kind of control our anxiety. And number one is just a natural response. If you're in a dangerous situation, a life-threatening situation, your mind is going to go into overdrive. It wants to know how you got into that dangerous situation, how you're going to get out, what's the best way to escape it, what's the best way to defend yourself. And you begin to sort of tear the situation apart thinking on your feet to be able to escape this dangerous situation so thank you jesus that you created our minds that way to keep us safe and so that is one of the reasons why we tend to over analyze every fear and every thought we become the second reason i think too kind of lies a lot with our belief in and the things that we were taught as christians we're taught to be very sort of contemplative and inward focused in the sense of analyzing our sin and our minds and our hearts and making sure that we um, have a pure heart before God, that we're righteous before him. And that's something that we're really taught to do a lot. So it's no surprise that when you are sort of handling some really awful thoughts or fears or things that come your way, you're going to begin to sort of overthink and analyze why it's there. Why is it happening to you? Where is it coming from? Is it a sin? Is it a lie? Is it a generational curse? And we tend to kind of overthink it that way. And I think when you're dealing with something like a mental illness, this can be actually really dangerous. And I think it can make things worse. I think the time for deep analysis of the heart and the spirit of the mind is when you can see a above the water when you're actually treading the waters of anxiety and you're not completely consumed by it you're a little bit more level-headed and clear-headed because you are so bombarded with strange things that are happening to you there is no way to sort of dissect whether or not this is satanic or whether or not this is physical or mental and so I believe that when we begin to overanalyze every reason behind every fear, thought, and sensation, it actually feeds the fear of the thought because your thoughts are demanding power and attention. I This was something that I had to learn to do is that I had to learn to really trust God to analyze my heart and my mind. You know, it was such a big fear, the fear of going crazy. And when it got to the point where I thought I may even have to be hospitalized, what an overwhelming feeling and sensation it was to think that what would happen if I ever truly lost my mind and I did go crazy and I wasn't able to think for myself anymore? What if my mind got so ill I couldn't even function as a mom anymore? Where would my heart be in that? Where would my salvation be in that? And this is something that can, oh, it can just be such a disturbing thought. And so we have to actually learn, and I had to learn. I remember praying, you know, God, can I trust you with my mind? And boy, when I was challenged with that question, that was such a hard one to swallow, to begin to lay down even my own thoughts and my mind to God and trust that he was going to sort it out, that he was going to heal it. And so we have to learn to just allow the Holy Spirit to bring up what is hidden in darkness into light instead of us trying to decide what is darkness and what is light and where it is coming from because that only fuels the fear and so what I learned to do was just to respond with these things that would come my way with saying to myself you know what it's just a thought no matter how disturbing it was I would just say it's just a thought it doesn't mean anything at this point it's just a thought or it's just a feeling or it's just a sensation and so learning to just let it go and not analyze every single thing that came my way was so freeing for me and then that's when God was able to actually get to my heart and get to the deeper issues because I wasn't standing in his way The truth is, is we can trust God to bring to light what is hidden in darkness. We don't always have to go hunting for it. I have a scripture here from 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1. It says, I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. And at that time, each will receive their praise from God. 
think of it this way you're dumped off a ship you're drowning in the ocean and you're flailing and half the reason why they say somebody drowns when they're trying to be when they're being rescued is because they're panicking so much that they don't give up the control to trust the other person to save them and so when god is trying to throw you a life raft and you are busy flailing and trying to figure out how you fell in and how you're going to get out and what you're going to do and and why is this happening to you you miss out on the life raft that God is trying to give you and so when you begin to sort of release that to God that say Holy Spirit I trust you to bring to light what is hidden in darkness I trust you on this journey that you are going to lead me to wholeness and healing and you are going to bring up the things in my heart that need to be dealt with I don't have to go searching for it. I don't have to dig around for it. So Psalm 139.23 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Nobody knows your heart and your anxious thoughts more than God. And you have to trust him with that. 